today, and we are joined on 365 Sports by Baylor quarterback Daquan Finn right here on this Thursday afternoon. Daquan, thank you so much for your time. When I say Baylor quarterback Daquan Finn, what does that mean to you? <laughs> you know, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, it's, it's a new rain time. It's a new rain so You know, I have got to get used to it, but, you know, it feels good. And I can, you know, uh, finally, you know, find a place called home, so. What has this process been like for you and with the transfer portal? And, and eventually you make the decision. You announced your commitment on Sunday evening. What has this been like since you entered the portal? Um, you know, it's been a, it's been a lot, you know, kind of, you know, I'm kind of, I'm very thankful for, you know, all the schools that have been, you know, reached out to me and stuff like that. Um, it's been, it's been a process for sure, you know, just, you know, just seeing numbers, random numbers, call your phone every single minute of the day. It's kind of like, all right, who is this? You know, you don't know if it's a coach or just, you know, you don't know what it is, but, um, you know, it's been kind of, you know, it's been good so far and I'm just thankful I finally, you know, found a place called home, so. Daquan, how did this portal experience, I know it wasn't long lasting, it wasn't like, you know, a whole year or anything like that, but how did that compare to your original recruiting uh, experience that, that led you to college football originally and uh, just kind of, uh, you know, what led you to, to Baylor ultimately as well? What was it about them? Yeah, it's very different, you know, from high school to now, you know, I kind of wasn't that, you know, that recruited guy, you know, coming out of high school, kind of underrated guy, but now, you know, being in the transfer portal, and it just gives you a whole different horizon, uh, you know, a different perspective on certain things as far as the recruitment process goes. But um, you know, I feel as though Baylor was the right fit for me. Um, I feel as though it's the the atmosphere was just I just I just felt like home so, as soon as I stepped foot on campus. You know, uh, just being with Coach, um, seeing Coach Aranda, just seeing Coach Favreau, just seeing all the coaches staff, just seeing the whole coaches staff, and just seeing. You know, the hospitality that, that they gave me, you know, just being there just felt like, you know, like a home, a home vibe. And I can really, I can, you know, very much see myself at Baylor. So, How would you describe, if you could, in a word or even in a sentence, your time and your thoughts on Dave Aranda? Smart. I'll say that for sure. Uh, you know, we talk ball. He knows what he's talking about. You can tell by his approach, you can tell by the dialect and his voice and cadence. Uh, you can tell that he's very serious about ball, and I'm sure the whole city of uh, Waco is too, you know, um, as far as, you know, how that goes. You can tell they want to win. You can tell, you, you can see it in his face. You can see it in his demeanor. You can see it in everyone else's face and demeanor. You can just tell his seriousness for the love of the game, and that's one thing I'll describe. I, that's one thing I'll describe, you know, for Coach Randy, Randy so... Daquan, how have you grown as a player uh, in your time in college thus far compared to, to when you came out in high school originally? And for those who haven't seen a lot of you playing or Toledo playing, uh, what would you kind of give as a scouting report of yourself? I'll say exciting football. You know, uh, I describe myself as, you know, a, a complete quarterback. You know, uh, being at Toledo allowed me, to, you know, uh, develop my abilities to complete, to, to to allow my ability to to help myself be a complete quarterback, you know, as far as you know, everybody knew I was, you know, known for, you know, when a pocket, when a play break down, I could just use my legs and escape out of problems. But now being able to two time the defense with my arm and my legs, so it's kind of like two for one, and you know, it just it just keeps the defense on their toes, and it just allows me to have more freedom and play like myself, you know, at this level. So. I'll say one word to describe me as exciting. So. Yeah, you, you obviously, as a dual threat, we, I've seen videos. Everybody has seen some of the highlights when you were with Toledo, what you could do throwing the football to your receivers. Uh, when you have that kind of ability to run, was that something, as you kind of mentioned that, but is that something that if all hell broke loose, you could just run? But now when there's just confusion or chaos or th something breaks down, you're just as comfortable as throwing the football to one of your receivers? Yeah, absolutely. And now I kind of feel as though it's more of just, you know, extended plays now, you know, as far as, you know, my running ability. I kind of see it as a plus, you know, just being able, like I said, playing enough football to know when to run, when not to run, when to throw it, when not to throw it, when to take certain hits and when not to take certain hits. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just playing those type of games just allowed me, 
you know, just feel the game better off. And just being able to, you know, like I said, play more free. Because now it, I'm I'm not running just to run now. It's more like just to extend the play now. You see, like, a lot of quarterbacks in the league or just I'm not even comparing myself, but just, just for an example, like, for instance, like Pat Mahomes, like you see, for instance, like when a pack pocket breaks down, you see him extend the plays with his legs. And being it allows him to, you know, use his arm to find more, find more receivers open and things of that nature. So, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't want to compare myself, but I'm just using that as a reference. But, you know, just being able to, like I said, two times the defense is, like I said, is very helpful. So. Quan, we talked about, you know, Aranda and Spavital. There's obviously a lot of quarterbacks out there in the transfer portal, just a lot of players in general, a lot of different schools coming after you. Um, you talked about what made sense for you and Baylor, but what was Baylor's message to you, whether it was Coach Spavital or Coach Aranda? Why did they say that they wanted you in particular, and what was it about you and your game that they want to transfer over? Or what did they say they kind of want to see from you here in Waco? Yeah, uh, you know, I was a uh... – you know, a great person first and great player second. And that's one thing I kind of, you know, took, it stuck out in me for Coach uh, Miranda. Because, you know, a lot of guys, they'll just, I'm not calling nobody out, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's player first, person second. And, you know, he co- he emphasized the person, a good person with, a good person that take care of things off the field will allow you to, you know, trans- it'll translate on the field. And that's one thing I kind of took away from Coach Aranda. And, um, you know, Coach Battle, it just, like I said, he, his, but like with the quarterback he had and allowing them, you know, you know, just kind of play, not free football, but the numbers that they put up is kind of like, it's video game numbers. Like Geno Smith, Will Greer, Johnny Manziel, like just to name a few, David Webb, like those guys, you know, I could see myself in this type of offense, you know, just being that type of, electrifying guy that can help, you know, help the team win because that's one thing, you know, co- the coaches noticed about me. They said, you're a true winner, and that's one thing I, I am. I, I see myself as a winner because I hate to lose, you know. You know, a lot of people hate to lose, but, you know, it's just a different, like I said, it's just a different feel with me, you know. Like I said, the the, the resume speaks for itself, but like, I, don't, I don't like losing, and that's one thing, you know, the coaches really mentioned for real, so. State championships in high school, obviously a MAC championship, what you were named as the pl- player of the year and all of that. When you came out of high school, you weren't the dog. You were good, and you had a heck of a career coming out of where you were in Detroit, but you, as you said even, that, that it, not quite many people knew much about you. And maybe at times, I, I was told that your personality was good, but that you were kind of so quiet, reserved, that maybe some schools backed off because they wanted you to be an alpha personality. Is that also something that you've grown into doing over these four years at Toledo? Uh, that's kind of funny you say that. Um, yeah, you know, I am a quiet guy, kind of reserved guy, but also, you know, uh, you know, everyone leads differently. And everyone, you know, sets an example a different way. You know, you might have some guys that lead by example, and then when it's time to say something, you know, the voice, the, the team will listen to you, of course. And they, your words do mean a lot and it holds a lot of weight. And I feel as though that's kind of like how it was with me, you know. I wasn't going to say too much because I was going to say, I was going to say the right thing at the right time when it's, when it's time for the team to hear what I have to say. But being at Toledo, it allowed me to open up more, it allowed me to be, become, you know, open up my personality more, become myself more. And, you know, now it's more of, you know, just like I said, just being comfortable in my own skin and mm-hmm. just allowed me to open up more, being more vocal, you know, talk to guys that I wasn't normally, that I wouldn't normally talk to and just opening up those type of relationships and those connections that that's going to allow, you know, me to, you know, be closer and build that, that chemistry and bond closer with my teammates. But, um, yeah, I, I was for say, well, I was, I was quiet for sure when I was young. I'm not going to lie, but uh, now, like I said, I opened up way more now. I was almost completely different now. Dequan, where'd your love for the game of football come from and grow from? Uh, how did that just sort of ex- intertwining of football and, and your life kind of all come together and, and get to this point now? Yeah. Um, you know, my family is a my family is a, a heavy football family. Uh, you know, my mom, my uh my dad, you know, put the ball in my crib when I was what, three months? three months so it's kind of like it's been destined for me you know for a young pup so um 
and it, like I said, I love, especially playing quarterback. I played quarterback what, at the age of seven, eight years old. You know, just watching a lot of, you know, Michael Vick and Cam Newton growing up. So it's just kind of been like that. And there's just been scars in the limit. So. so I heard you're your mother's son. What does that mean? Yes, sir. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a, uh, I'm a mama's boy. So, <laughs> yeah, that's my rock. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I heard that there's no doubt. Uh, Kia, is that your mother's name? Is that correct? Lakaya. Lakaya, I'm sorry, that uh, you are your mother's son. Now, how much has former Michigan quarterback Devin Gardner, who I spoke with a little bit today, we're going to have part of an interview with him about you, about Baylor, uh, and about football a little bit later in the show, how much he's known you for, what, six, seven, eight years since you were 15 years old or so, how much of a role model and mentor has he meant to your life? He was mentor to me. Uh, I kind of look at him as a bigger brother, you know, as far as just talking to him. You know, he's been in a situa- uh, you know, been in a situation before at, at a high a high level, so it's kind of like just paying my respect and just really just soaking up as much game as I can from him. You know, I'm kind of like a sponge when, when, it, when it goes to uh, Devin because, like I said, he's seen a lot. He's been through a lot, and he knows the right and the wrong throughout the, the whole situation. He, he knows how to maneuver away, in a way. So it's just kind of like, you know, anything he say, I'm going to listen. And he helped me develop, you know, tremendously from, you know, just being more balanced in my, uh, with my throws, not leaning, just staying more uh, vertical, staying more forward with my throws and things of that nature, and having that more spin and velocity and pop when I throw the ball, it, it just helps a lot. And I can see it in my in my throwing, I can see it in my play, and it allows me to be more confident on the field as well. So you said every time someone either called you or texted you once you entered the portal that it was like bam, 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 whichever direction. Did you sometimes just turn your phone off and just try to enjoy life? <laughs> yeah, I kinda did. I'm not gonna hold you. Yeah, it was some points where, you know, uh, I had to put my phone on Do Not Disturb. But because it was like, like I said, it was phone, I get phone calls like every, like, you know, every 30 minutes. So it was kind of like exhausting at a certain point of time. So I had to just, you know, put my phone on D and D, just, you know, just taking time to myself and just kind of, you know, get my mind, clear my mind and just breathe a little, you know, so. What was it like, Daquan, when you moved to Toledo and you weren't, like I mentioned earlier, you weren't the guy on campus for someone who had been so highly decorated in high school in Detroit that you were, and like championship level caliber. But when you got there, you weren't. How much did you learn about yourself at that time that things just, you you had to work for it even more? It definitely was a reality check. But um, like I said, but that's the adversity that, you know, you got to go through, you know, as a young guy, just getting, just getting acclimated to the college speed and the college life. So, um, you know, once I heard I didn't want to start a job, you know, I just, I use that as motivation. I use that as extra fuel. So there's times I'll grab some of the young receivers and we would just go, um, in the indoor, you know, late at night or 11 o'clock, stuff like that, just getting those type of throws. And then that was like on a consistent basis though. That wasn't like just here and there. That was every day. I get like one of my roommates, he was my receiver and that was like my best friend. So anytime we got the chance to go on the field, we had the opportunity. Like it was sometimes we had to sneak in the indoor, you know, just to, just to throw around, just to throw the ball. But that's how hungry I was for the, for the game. And that's how hungry I was to, you know, just the, the need of getting better because like I said, ain't, ain't nobody's perfect in this world. And I want, I want to make sure I'm the, the best. That, like I said, overall complete quarterback there is in the country. And, you know, that's nobody's gonna stop me from that. And like I said, just being able to the hard work I said really separated myself from anybody else at Toledo and the and it's like I said, it spoke for itself. And like I said, it's just it's just you just it's just good to see you know your hard work start to get you know recognized and stuff like that. So. Baylor does have a quarterback room with Sawyer Robertson, who came in from Mississippi State, R.J. Martinez, who was from Northern Arizona. They're on the roster now. On your visit, did you get a chance to see them, visit with them, talk to them at all? And your thoughts about this offense, as you mentioned, with Jake Spavital 
and the quarterback room in the competition? Yeah, I didn't get a chance to speak with them. I think they were uh, wrapping up finals and mm-hmm. things like that. So I think they went home. I think prior the days before I even got there, but you know, I'm looking forward to you know me and everyone, you know, just earn everyone respect in the whole in the whole team and just you know just just building that bond and that chemistry within the quarterback room. So it could be a healthy quarterback room in there, you know, animosity. And I'm just looking forward to you know learning from those guys, those guys, and you know just really and just competing. You know? uh, yeah, no, that's great. Uh, who is Musa El Mubarak? Oh, Musa El Mubarak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell that's, everybody uh, about the story about your relationship. He's an eight-year-old. He's a part of Devin Gardner's camps, but you have a special. Seemed like a pretty good uh, conversation or a rapport with him about him telling you something or vice versa as you have fun with those kids as they're trying to learn how to play the game. Yeah, Musa is a special one. Um, you know, I'm, I seen him when he was you know probably like five years old barely know how to throw a football and stuff like that and just seeing his development and his growth. It's 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 crazy to see that. But um, you know, Musa he's a good he's a a great young kid that has, you know, the sky's the limit for him. He's always smiling, you know, so that's kinda like that's his personality. He's gonna be the the small, upbeat little kid. So every time you see him it just it just brings you joy and just smiles and just you know, you just know you're gonna have a good time with him. And um you know, Musa, he's like, like I said, a little, like a little brother to me. So it's kind of like, you know, I have to like show him the way, show him the way of like how to do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? So just seeing him, you know, doing his thing, it's kind of like extra motivation to me and the rest of the kids that, uh, that's part of, like, or that's a part of Young Go Getters. You know, just seeing those guys smiling every time I come up back home. And just ask, just seeing them, how how is it DQ? How is cause like just them asking those questions? Kind of like, yeah, man, I gotta I gotta do better for those guys. So you know, it's it's a surreal moment. I'm just you know just thankful and happy I had in my life. So. Yeah, and, and I heard he's as excited as the kids are when you started beating Devin in those quarterback uh, type battles you had, those quarterback type <laughs> games uh, that that lit up everybody. Uh, you have now a few days to rest and enjoy the Christmas holidays. Um, and, and then eventually you arrive on campus. What do you get a chance to do now? Is it just chill but keep working out, focused on getting here to Waco and getting ready for the football season or at least spring drills in a, in a few months? Yeah, no, I'm at home. I'm just, like, like you said, I'm working. Um, just really just waiting for that day, for real. So it's kind of like I got some all time, but now I got my school now, so it's back to work really, so... Did you know that Devin Gardner wore jersey number 98 when he played quarterback? If you wear 98 at quarterback, you know you got to be pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I grew up watching him. And just, I was like, why you got number 98 on? And then at first, and then, you know, he just seeing the, the meaning behind the number 98, it's kind of like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. This guy's like that. So then, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's pretty special just seeing, you know, having a guy like that around me every single day. So. My last question for you. Baylor obviously did not have a very good season. There's a reason why there were changes and why they're also looking for people to come on the roster to help them do better. I know you watched a lot of film of Jake Spavital's offenses and what Baylor did as well. When you committed on Sunday, did you realize, with all due respect to anybody else in the roster or whoever is signed this week, what a breath of uh, energy or so to, that you, you shot into the fan base when you announced your commitment? Do you even realize that? Oh um, at first I kinda of didn't know it till like I really started to see like oh uh, like it's it's really starting to get real now. So uh <laughs> um no, I was kinda of surprised just seeing just seeing that, you know, you know, seeing my commitment blow up like that, but I mean not kinda of surprised, but I was surprised like as far as far as like the fan base, you know, as far as everyone just blowing up and just saying, you know, great things and stuff like that. And it's just, you know, it's more motivation when you see things like that, and it just brings you more, you know, confidence going into heading into another team school like that. So it's, it's very exciting. I'm excited. So they are too, Daquan. Thanks for your time. I know it's been a, a a long journey from Detroit to Toledo, and now you're headed to Central Texas around the corner. We appreciate your time. Congratulations on your commitment, and we hope to talk to you again very soon. Yes, sir. Thank you for having. Thank me. you. That's Daquan Finn, De- Devin Gardner. 